Hi SQL folks, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. Today we are going to talk about the eager index pool operation. Now look at the screen here. I just ran a stored procedure. I call this my business report. There is a select statement behind it and it's taking quite a while to run this report. So as this is running, it's already passed a minute. Let's zoom in and see that one minute, 20 seconds have passed by. This might take about two to three minutes uh, to execute the query. Let it execute. I'll jump over to another query window where I'd executed it before I started the recording. Let's jump over to that window and you will see the execution took about two minutes 40 seconds for 150 rows. Now the final result set gave us 150 rows. Of course, this query is dealing with a lot larger data. There are two tables that we are working with here. One is the product table and the other one is the transactions table. The transactions table has a few million records and the product table has a few thousand records. Now we get 150 rows, that's fine. The query takes a lot of time, two minutes, 40 seconds, which means this is a good candidate for tuning. Now, when you jump over to the execution plan, the first thing that will catch your attention is, and you know, typically when you're looking at the execution plan, you want to figure out where do you start tuning a query is of course, you look at the operator cost. When you look at the operator cost here, obviously the eager index pool will catch your attention. Let's zoom in and you will see that 82% of the overall plan cost is eaten up by this operator. Now what exactly is spooling? Spooling is a mechanism, a technique by SQL Server to cache the input data so that SQL Server can reuse it again and again. Spooling, which means creating a temporary data set, a hidden temporary data set. In case of SQL Server, it's hidden, it's created inside tempdb. Now there are two ways how SQL Server can spool this data. The one is eager spooling and the other one is lazy spooling. Eager spooling, as the name says, it will cache all the rows at once. When the parent operator is asking for the first row, it will cache the entire in input at once and it will build the spool in, a, in an eager fashion. Lazy spool, on the other, ha uh, other hand, is just the opposite, which is it's going to build the spool as and when the request is coming from the parent operator, which means building this pool, building this temporary data set in a lazy fashion. So, uh, mind you, these both are eager and lazy spooling are logical operations. But what's the purpose finally? W why do you want to really use that spool data? One of the reasons here is the index spool. Now the name says index spooling, which means the optimizer was actually in need of an index. And uh, for whatever reason that index was not there. So the optimizer decided to uh, to create that index, to create that temporary index itself. It's not asking you, it's not even giving you a missing index hint. See here, you get those missing index hint in this area. There is no missing index hint. The optimizer creates this index on its own by spooling the data and then it's reusing that data again and again. If you take the cursor over here and zoom in a bit more, you will see that of course about 140 times this, um, you know, this data was reused, that is rewind and about eight times it had to go back to the source data and create the spool again. That's what rebinding to the source data means and rewinding which means going back to that that temporary cache data set means. Now, why is spooling bad and is it always bad? There have to be a few evidences that, okay, spooling is really bad here and can you do something about it? Of course, in this particular example, spooling operator is expensive. That's the first thing. The query is taking a lot of time to execute. I would rather put that as the first thing. The query takes a long, a, a lot of time to execute it. It's a slow running query. It has taken about more than two minutes. Let's see how much time this execution has taken in this window when you know the video, the demo just started. Okay, wow, five minutes, 22 seconds. Look at this execution now, five minutes, 22 seconds. So first indication, 
it's a slow running query. It's taking minutes to execute, which means you got to go and jump into the query, look into where are the tuning opportunities and why it is slow. Second one, now I, oh, for whatever reason, I did not turn on the actual execution plan for this one. I'll do this again. Let's go back to this one. So the query is taking minutes to execute. That's the first evidence. The second is when you look at the execution plan, immediately this operator is going to catch your attention because the cost is 82 percent high cost and the final evidence here is how many rows are being output by this operator if you take the cursor over this arrow and let's zoom in it's about 77,000 rows. 77,000 rows are being output, but the final result set, the final result set is just 150 rows. If there is a huge gap between the final result set and the number of rows being output by the, um, by the spool operator, probably there are chances that things are, uh, you may go and try to tune this. Now, tuning this spooling thing is just simply getting rid of it, trying to do things so that the optimizer has no need to spool the data. That's really what it is. Uh, there's no other way here, specifically in the case of this eager index spool. Of course, another funny part is uh, that uh, there is no missing index hint here, even though SQL Server actually needed an index. Now, what we do is we go and create the right index. So when I go into the execution plan, I'm actually taking the cursor over the index pool operator and I am investigating the seek predicates here. So I look at the query, I'm investigating the seek predicates and then we create the right index. And when the right index is created, okay, here we go. The right index is created. This was of course the execution done before I started this uh, recording. When the right index is created, believe it or not, the execution happens in less than one second. You click execute, boom, it executes. And it's just that fast. And you will look into the execution plan that yes, now there is no spool operator. And also the plan changes from a parallel execution to a single threaded execution. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is so that you see this live action, live, you know, in action, let's go and just stop this. And you know, it's taking a lot of time. Of course, I canceled it while it just crossed about two minutes. It's going to take about four to five minutes now. So you know that this is a bad, a slow running query. Why not just go ahead and create this index? Okay, so I'm going to go and create this right index now and then come back to this query here again, this report and then run it. Okay, friends, now when you are looking at this tutorial, you're watching me uh, demonstrate all of this, you want more details. What is this query, right? What is the select statement behind the stored procedure? How am I investigating the seek predicates? You want a few more details about the spooling operator and how to identify why it is bad and is it really a good candidate for, uh, you know, to, to fix. All of this is explained in a, a bigger, a longer video, which is available in the premium section. If you're watching this on YouTube, just jump over to the members only playlist and you will see a lot of advanced content there, including the longer version of this video. Opt for that and watch that full video. The other is if you're watching this on sqlmaestros.com, you can take up premium membership. I mean, with, with a free membership, you can watch all our free content. And with premium membership, you can watch all our paid webinars and all our advanced videos and get access to all the scripts and the queries and tools and everything. Even if you're watching this on YouTube, I would advise go log on to navigate to sqlmaestros.com and sign up for premium membership. Either way, whatever your choice is, be it on YouTube or sqlmaestros.com, the membership fee is very, very nominal and it's annual. So you get a lot and lot of content. Okay. So the index is created. Let's see here. Okay. The index is created. Let's jump back to this. Just a quick reminder. I canceled this query, right? And I canceled it when it was it crossed two minutes. Look at the status bar again there. Okay. Let's turn on the actual execution plan now. I'm going to execute this. Watch how much time it takes because now we have the right index. Done. The execution is done. It takes less than one second. You get your 150 rows output. And if you look into the execution plan, 
it's the same what I showed you earlier, no spool operator, single threaded execution. For you to verify this once more, I'm going to execute this again. Let's go and execute this again. And yes, it is indeed less than one second. Wonderful tuning stuff here. You know, straightforward query tuning, getting rid of the spooling operator. Also to let you know behind the scenes, the tables that we are joining and you know, the select query is actually dealing with millions of rows, the tables that we are dealing with, they're huge tables. So this is a very good query tuning example where a query is running slow and you identify what's going on and you go and fix it. Yes, uh, do watch the full video, the, the longer version of this one with all the artifacts in the premium section and uh, it will be worth it. Also friends, this video, this demonstration is taken up from our masterclass recordings. 40 hours of deep dive content, SQL Server Performance Tuning Masterclass, 40 hours of deep dive recorded content is now available for lifetime subscription. If you subscribe, you can watch the content anytime, anywhere, as many times as you want. All of this is available on sqlmaestros.com. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Do share this with your friends and colleagues and navigate to sqlmaestros.com. A lot of learning stuff out there. I will see you soon in another video. And if you've learned something new today, do put a comment. I would love to read that. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.